curtains. <laughs> Pull yourself together. As always, Betsy. Betsy! <laughs> yes, the tense moment viewers have these poor blighters got the power. <laughs> Just a second. Thank you so much, most kind. Well, thank goodness for that. They've got the power after all, and you could have too. National power and power gem. Register for a prospectus by February the 15th, and you could get incentives. We must be flipping out. Rock and roll on the movie channel. Frank Zappa's cult classic. I think obviously Terry Butcher was, was an immense signing for him. Um, you need, obviously when he was initially signing the players from England, he wanted someone to, to build his team around, to be the, the focal point, the hub of it. And I think Terry Butcher fitted that pattern brilliantly. Um, I think Terry grew with the club. He wanted to be there. He was Rangers through and through when he was here for four years. And he was a very important signing. But a serious rift had developed between Butcher and the club and Rangers took the unprecedented step of calling a press conference to give their side of the story. Details of private conversations were divulged, and after that, it was clear Terry Butcher was on his way. It was the saddest chapter, saddest chapter, in my time as Rangers manager to date. You feel that the special relationship that Terry Butcher had built... We had four great years together, and for some strange reason that I have not yet found out, he chose to change that. Do you still have any contact with him? Have you? No. I wish him all the very best in his new new job, and um, you know Terry will soon appreciate that this job is a lot harder than just playing. But I wish him all the best because we had four great years together. And he's already discovering some of these hard decisions. Right, he has so to be, make. It'll be hard for him, but you know Terry showed a lot of character here as a player, and if he shows half of that character and management, then he's got a real chance. While one character was departing the scene, a new one who'd arrived with a tough reputation was already emerging as a special favourite. Terry Hurlock joined Rangers from Millwall, and at the age of 32, this unassuming Cockney had suddenly hit the big time. He's only been here sort of five months. As you said, he's been very influential in his short time here. If Terry continues to play in the manner in which he has done in the last four or five months, then I'll be delighted. He is a very good footballer. People look at Terry Harlock. Um, the ones who know nothing about the game and say, look at him, you know, he kicks people. He doesn't kick people, he does anything but kick people. He challenges fairer than 90% of the midfield players playing in the Premier League today. He's, he's strong, he's aggressive, his strength um, wins them a lot of the balls. And, um, Apart from that side of his game, he is a good footballer. He can pass the ball. He can pass um, at the right time, hold on to it at the right time. He's an experienced player. And as I said, I'll be delighted if we get another couple of years of the quality that Terry's showing right now. Rangers fans may have been pleasantly surprised by her luck, but they knew exactly what kind of quality to expect from the new star, Oleg Kuznetsov. He'd played twice at Ayrbox for Dynamo Kiev, and at £1.2 million, he seemed to be a bargain. But in only his second game for Rangers, he went down with a knee injury, which has put him out of the game for several months, prompting a controversial outburst from Souness. You made a remark uh, some weeks ago about there being too many hammer throwers in Scottish football. The phraseology, do you regret that for a start? Do you, are you aware of the fact that all over Scotland people... I've upset hammer throwers. So you still insist that there is such a thing in Scottish football and who deserve to be described in that way. Well, um, again, before we're going to throw them, people turn around and say, but see, it's very easy for me to, to come out and say that because I'm, I'm the manager of Glasgow Rangers who can go out and, and buy players. Um, I'd argue that point. It's never been my philosophy. It wasn't the way I played football. It's never been my philosophy to fill a team with people who just can't stop other people playing. And I think um, some people are guilty of that. Are you aware of the fact that a lot of people in Scotland who perhaps like don't, don't sympathise with you or with Rangers... Listen, um, Matt, if there's certain things I would say, um, this carpet's blue and there'll be people out there that would argue the point. Anything to do with Rangers in some people's eyes is wrong, so that's something we just have to get on with. Yes, but, but people say 
Graham Souness, a, a, a man, is a player who wasn't afraid to put it about a bit, and he's talking about hammer throwers. And all. Does that hurt you, that kind of criticism? No, it didn't hurt me as a player. It certainly doesn't now. It's the people are criticising, David. Well, obviously, uh, one player who is nowhere near being a hammer thrower is Oleg Kuznetsov. Uh, this is a, a truly world-class player, um, and, and you got him. Do you think it was a bargain? <sighs> he's played 95 minutes for us. I felt when we signed him that he was a truly outstanding performer. I said privately I felt he was the best player in the world in his position. Um, I think in the 90 minutes that he played out there, people would, um, on that performance anyway, okay, the one game, people would maybe agree with me on that. I'd seen him playing half a dozen times, played against him, and the performance he gave against St. Mern that day um, was the performances he had turned in in the games I'd gone to see him play. Um, tragic for him, tragic for this football club. Um, the Scottish public, in the short term anyway, have been denied seeing a truly world-class performer playing on a regular basis in Scotland, which that can't be said, or hasn't been said for, for a long, long time about players playing in the Premier League. You know, people uh, you know, over the last couple of months, uh, there's this, this thing about hammer throwers in Scotland, and, and I can remember a couple of months ago reading this, and someone was saying, well, how can Graham Souness talk about being a hammer thrower when he was one himself, which I found quite an amazing statement for, to, to be in the press. Graham Souness had, had as much ability as any player that was playing in the English First Division. If you were to ask any Liverpool player who played with him, his, his influence would have been... I would say almost on a par with Kenny Dalglish's. Now, for someone to have that much influence on the side, he must have been able to play. I mean, I've been in close contact with Graham many times in games we played against each other. He was a quality player. He was very hard. I mean, don't let me don't let me think that I'm kidding you on here about he couldn't look after himself. Graham Souness could look after himself, but he wanted to win. His biggest single asset, I believe, is that he's a winner. He doesn't like losing. Kenny Dalglish once said, "Show me a good loser, and I'll show you a loser." And I think Graham Souness holds that belief as well. He wants to win, he hates getting beat, and if you've got those attributes and you can play a bit as well, then you wouldn't have been a bad player. Monsoon conditions greeted fans arriving at Hamden for this season's Skull Cup final. But it would take more than rain to dampen the enthusiasm of 63,000 who turned up to see Celtic and Rangers battle it out for the first trophy of the season. Celtic attack the goal to the left. And here's McCoy for Rangers. Jim McCluskey is sure to keep an eye on the early challenges. Peter Grant, who is Celtic through and through. But it's good to see the players smiling. Even if maybe there's a touch of irony about that directed at the referee. McCoy going down. Already Rangers have sent Richard Goff forward, and of course in Mark Hately, they do have an exceptional player in the air to compensate for the absence of Johnston. John Brown is in there as well, and it's over them all. Andy Gray, I'm sure they're glad to be out there and running now after all the talk of the past few days. Yes, there's nothing quite like that first whistle blowing in a cup final. And all the talking's over, now it's all down to who wants it most, who really wants to actually win this cup final. And Woods has to save as suddenly it opened up for Craney. This opened up quite alarmingly, but it was a super little ball from Jakinowski. And this is, this is why Chris Woods is England number one at the moment, that really was a super save. Craney got into that channel. Czekanowski, uh, who must be a difficult opponent, he's not a predictable player by any means. And it was uh, a flick full of perception. Craney, who scored at that very end in the semi-final here against Dundee United, was uh, in and threatening Rangers here. Rogan. Walter's trying to be too tricky. <laughs> Gary Stevens hurling himself.
himself in. Commitment must be total. It seems an obvious thing to say, but sometimes uh, week in, week out, league games, matches start off that way and they, they drift and the pattern is taken in different directions. But with this game, you can be sure that uh, nothing will slacken. Goff let it get away from him. Brainy did well. Jepanovsky against Brown. Past Brown, but not past Woods. Twice he's had to go to his left to keep Celtic out. And once again, the combination of Jepanovsky and Craney causing Rangers tremendous problems. And it is a great effort. And in conditions like this, this is a great save to hold on to that ball. The ball obviously very slippery. And had he lost it, then Joe Miller was pouncing. Room here for McCoyst. A lot of room. And on he goes. Walters is in at the near post. It's a corner. Well, this is no tight tense affair. Ali McCoyst, who Celtic hadn't tracked down at all. Walters had a tight angle, but Bonner had to cover it. Stephen to take the corner. Hately waiting on the edge of the area. Brown right in by the goalkeeper who didn't get that. In goes Hately. 31 times Mark Hately played for England. Poulter. And again. Kepanowski's onside. Anyone perhaps aimed for Craney. Uh, to win it in the air. Stephen. Just to remind you, the destiny of the 1990 Skull Cup must be decided today. The next time and a penalty shootout thrown into the mix if necessary. simple at times, and so too does Trevor Stephen from Rangers, touch from Hately, the through ball from Herlock, Bonner's come, McCoyst, oh and the referee rules that that's a dive, and it's a throw, and McCoyst is furious. You should see these saying unbelievable to the, to the referee, and I must admit, I thought that when I thought seeing it right off, I think it, I thought it was a penalty. He definitely takes Alan McCoy's legs, and I think Pat Bonner and Celtic in particular are very lucky to get away with that. And it's Celtic with Fulton. And Fulton improvised well. Jekanowski, and again. That just before that, Mark Hately is about two or three yards offside, and the, the linesman just didn't look. But really, I can only put it's a great tackle from Paul Elliott. But why he wanted to get it onto his left foot, I can't understand it. He must surely have put it with his right foot, Mark Hately. Stephen. And Bonner was certainly not in command. post-mortem going on there. It was Goff who was coming in where he could be deadly. And 
the opposing penalty area. It's a point Andy Gray made earlier. The Rangers have a, a number of players who love to attack the ball in the air. It might be their route to victory. John Brown is one of those. It'll be a source of concern for Celtic in defence. very best at the edge of the box right wing and riding gets himself a yard of space and that's one of those that Christmas must have thought oh no it's in the net with Fulton and Craney showing well whatever happens here it's a, a bright horizon for Celtic in that respect Spackman pursued by McStay and that was Goff having to Hurry back, claims a goal kick, but it's a corner. And Chris Woods angry that it's a bit lax in front of him. Celtic were swarming on the edge of the area then. Collins to take the corner. Post if Walters can get across in. Walters had other ideas. This is Stevens. Well, given some of the difficulties that Bonner's had in this game, that was a very nonchalant save. Yes, he made it look very, very easy. He's had some trouble keeping hold of this ball, and at a time when he really needed it, it was like plucking apples off a tree, wasn't it? Walters, 1-1. One, one. Absolutely no chance for Bonner. Well, we've certainly got a game now, haven't we? It's a good little move, and for once, back here against down, finds Ali McCoy's. Mark Walters punishes them badly for some slack marking and buries it right in the corner. Really gives Pat Bonner no chance at all. McCoyce did very well to control the knockdown and Walters coming on to it found the ball absolutely uh, ideally placed. McCoyce. Stephen. Walters. Four in the middle for Rangers. Who headed it away and John Hewitt had to help out. The attack just lost its momentum after Walters had sparked it off so speedily on the far side. But it's still a Rangers corner as they to pick up the scent for victory. Well, 
Well, Bonner could have been beaten by any sort of second touch. And Jekanowski is away. No time to ponder on that for the moment. He's short of support. It's arrived now in the shape of Chris Morris. And here's Collins lining one up. And again, oh, is it for Hewitt? So the score was 1-1 at the end of 90 minutes, and the game was set for extra time. A few brief moments for the players to gather their thoughts and their energy for the demands of the extra period, and a chance for the managers to lift their teams for another big effort. Morris. Jekanowski, even for a player of his fine touch, it was a dastardly ball to try and control, really. Walters, though, has the mastery here. McCoy's to the right. Hates these well forward, as you would expect, as well. Spackman, Celtic was still trying to get back, and grateful that the Rangers worked the ball closer to them. And here's Rogan. And the Jekanowski... What a wonderful save by Woods. This has been Celtic's best tactic all day, and they've done it again. They soaked up the Rangers' attack, broke very quickly. And what a save from Chris Woods. Goalkeepers who stand up like that always give themselves a chance. He stood up late, late, didn't give Jack and Austin the upper hand. He's made a great save and kept Rangers in the game. Jakanowski, I suppose, will regard it as a miss, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. He was trying, as strikers like to do, to just get it low and close, because that's where goalkeepers find it hard to get to the quickest. Celtic scuttling back, an early cross from Stevens. Haitley got to it, and it, oh, Bonner <laughs> slipping and crawling and almost crumbling. Walters to rein it in and it looked awkward for him but the back heel didn't come off Rogan offside you start looking around as to who could be the headline maker Trainee for one of course who's kept up his appetite for the fray and throughout the game has adorned it really with some clever contributions He's an experience. Oh, and is it in? It is. It's Richard Goff who came round the back. And we'll feel here that he could have won it for Rangers. Bonner is furious with the defenders. It's an untidy goal in many ways, but it doesn't matter in a cup final. There's no such thing as an untidy goal, and at the time they just felt Rangers look more likely. Everyone's paying attention to the two big boys again, and Chris Morris gets caught. I'm sure he was anxious about being too close to his goalkeeper and knocking it back, but full credit to Richard Bob. He's very, very determined. He doesn't look at the players and just makes straight for the ball, and it's that crucial toe to it. Knocks it past Pat Bonner. Now Celtic have got all the questions to answer. Come on, he says. And he's set the example. Rogan. Hope rising for Celtic and Woods rising for Rangers. It was uh, an inventive effort from Trainee. Yes, and it's a, it's a sign that he's always looking for the unexpected. He's always looking to try something different. And you think he's, not, he's going to knock it back or cross it across goal. He tries for the far corner and he isn't far away. Walters. Oh, he was being held back. Quite clearly being held back then. Actually, 
wasn't in possession of the ball, which is possibly why Celtic got the benefit of the doubt. Guided down well by Craney. There he is. Jakonowski, it's deflected, and uh, it's another despairing look. And back by Ferguson, who's been very busy indeed since he came on. Sometimes they say as a substitute it's difficult to fit in, and it surely can't have been easy as Ferguson has made it look. The Rangers have won. Richard Goff has done it. And the pain of the past few days is forgotten. And they've come from behind to do it.